What's going on guys? Welcome back to Raider World. So in this episode on the Eldorado Project, we have the Hogworks interfering. So welcome back to another episode on the Eldorado Project. It's been a fun project so far. I've had a blast with it. So yeah, we're in the middle of the Tap Performance Folsom Prison Series bars install. And I figured, hey, we already have the outer fairing off. We have the fairing off. Why not swap the inner fairing and let's do that color swap now. I'll show you exactly how I got to this point. I won't skip through that, even though you can watch it in a previous episode. I'll show you exactly how I got to this point. Uh, that way you don't have to bounce around videos and watch something somewhere else in order to get this off. Now getting all this off on here is pretty simple as well. This all comes off as one unit. You don't have to remove speaker pods or nothing like that. I'll show you exactly what screws you need to get off to get this all off at once. And then you have just your speaker grills and then your gauges and then the trim. So not too hard, not too difficult. I'll show you exactly how easy it is. That way you guys can do this at home if you plan on ordering one of these to color match your bike. Yeah guys, other than that, let's go. So to get this project started, I'm gonna remove the seat, the left saddlebag, and the left side cover. I'm gonna disconnect the main fuse because I am gonna remove the fuel tank. So I'll start off by disconnecting the fuel line. I'll pull up on this collar or this fitting and it'll pop right out. Just have a rag ready to catch any gas that comes out. So I'll disconnect the gray connector that leads to the tank and I'll also disconnect the vent hose. So for the tank, you have two screws in the back and two screws in the front. And for these, I'm using a half inch socket. Now I'm only removing the tank because I'm doing a color swap on the inner fairing and dash panel. And because I have the stretch tank from Hogworks, this will make it a lot easier to remove the dash panel. Now before I start removing the outer fairing, I'm gonna cover up the front fender. Now I'll start removing the outer fairing. You have three screws that hold on to the windshield trim and windshield. You have two short outer screws and one long inner screw. Now I'll lightly pull back on the outer fairing and pull out the windshield. So I'll reinstall the center windshield screw to support the outer fairing while I'm removing the other screws. Now I'll remove the two torque screws on the right and left side. You have a longer screw on the top, shorter screw on the bottom, and same thing, these are a T27. Now I'll take out the center windshield screw, I'll remove the outer fairing, and disconnect the headlight. Now I'll remove the right and left turn signals. Now I do have the Hogworks LED turn signals, but it's gonna be the exact same thing if you have the stock turn signals. You have two screws on each one, and they're 316 hex bit. Now I'll remove the dash panel. You have a screw on each side, and it's a 530 seconds hex bit. So I'll go ahead and pull this dash panel off. There's two connectors on the back. Now for the left side connector, the release tab is on the top. And for the right side connector, the release tab is on the bottom. Now after you remove the turn signals, you can remove this lower fairing skirt. Now because I am removing the fairing, I do have to disconnect a lot of these connectors. What I wanna do is disconnect any connectors that are leading towards the neck. They're gonna snag if I go to pull the fairing off. Now most of these connectors, if not all, have a designated spot, so it's kind of hard to get them mixed up. But if you want to take a picture or a video, you can do that. But all I want to do is just disconnect everything that's leading towards the neck, and then when I go to pull this off, nothing should snag. I'll start off by disconnecting the right side handlebar switch harness, then the run stop switch. I'll disconnect the left side handlebar switch harness. I'll pop out the twist grip sensor. Just held on by this Christmas tree. Just push down on this tab. It's easier if you just use a screwdriver. Push down on that and it pops out. As you can see, this cable runs up from the right side. So anything that I disconnect here is gonna stay to the right. And then you have your left cables here. They're gonna stay to the left. A lot of these are held on by Christmas tree retention clips. So just pop these out, follow them down and then disconnect them. This is just a headlight connector. This will stay attached to the fairing. So I'll disconnect the radio connector 
you have this tab located right here. Just push down on that, and then you just swing this lock open and pull it out. So here you have your USB cable that leads to your small glove box. You don't need to disconnect that. Now you do need to disconnect the radio antenna. There's a tab right here on the bottom. Just push up on that and it'll release it. Here's that tab on the radio antenna. You just push up on that so you can disconnect it. Here you have your GPS antenna. You don't need to disconnect that. I'll remove the right and left main to fairing harness. So I'll just look over one more time, make sure everything is disconnected, anything that's leading down towards the neck area here. And what I'll do is just tuck these wires back so nothing gets snagged, pulled, or damaged. Now I'll slowly pull back on the fairing to take it off, making sure nothing is getting snagged. So a trick that I use so I don't lose my screws inside of here, I just take a magnet, stick it onto that, and it magnetizes your bit. Or you can get a magnetic stick that's extendable and you can stick it down in there and pick out your screw. So to start this off, I'm gonna remove the vent. You have two Torx screws and they're a T25. So from here, you can just remove your vent, just slide it out, and it comes out just like that. So I'll start with the left side speaker pod. It's gonna be the same for the right. You have a total of three screws, one here, one here, and one deep down in there. I'm not removing the speaker pod, I'm just removing the screws that are attaching it to the inner fairing. So you have a total of three screws, and they're a 316 hex bit. So for the screw down in here, I am using a 3 16 extended hex bit. And it's gonna be the same thing for the right speaker pod. So now I'm gonna disconnect the gauges because the harness does stay attached to the assembly when you pull it off and then you'll remove the gauges after. I'll start off by removing the two Christmas tree retention clips. I'm just using a plastic prying tool to get them off. And here I'm just using a picking tool to lift up on the tab and pull it out. You have two tabs right here. Now I'll remove these two Torx screws that are screwed on from the support bracket to the gauges. And these are a T25. So here you have your power outlet. I'll just pull it out right here. This disconnects just like that. And to get this out, I'm using a one inch 12 point socket with an extension. I'll just use my little magnet tool to get it out. And then from the other side, you just pull your outlet out. It's not on there too tight, so don't worry about using a ratchet on it. So right there where the tip of my finger is, there's a torque screw. That is the lower torque screw for your media compartment. Uh, you'll take that out. Same thing, T25. All right, now that we have all the screws out to take off this entire assembly, just make sure that your media door is open. This makes it a little easier. All right, so all we have left is this outer trim. We have our right and our left mirrors. We have our speaker grills, we have our gauges, and then we also have this rubber here. This is just a dampening uh, rubber piece for your stereo so it's not rattling around. I'll take off this rubber trim. It is kind of stuck down on here with some double-sided tape.
So now I'll remove the right and left speaker grills. You're gonna remove all the torque screws. Now your speaker grills might be different, but mine are torque screws and they're a T20. And for my grills, these screws are all the same size, so I'm not worried about mixing them up. Now I'll remove the fuel and the voltage gauge. You have three screws on each and they're a T25. Now I'll remove the larger gauge cluster. You have one screw and it's a T25. So this bezel stayed on, just take that off. Now I just kind of heat these rubber pieces to get them off. Don't forget this little rubber piece for your media door that was right here. So I did leave the mirrors for last because it helps support the interfering while I'm removing everything else. So now I can take these off. Now I'm not reusing these mirrors, but to take these nuts off, it's a 916 socket. All right, so before I forget, make sure you take these little plastic retaining clips out. They hold the trim on, so you don't wanna forget these. You have three on their left and three on the right. All right, so the interfering from Hogworks does not come with mirror mounting holes. I was gonna relocate the mirrors anyway to the bars, but I did purchase these plugs. And basically all they do is just plug up your mirror holes. You would just stick these in there, pop them in and plug it up. So here you have your voltage gauge. I'm gonna take this chrome piece off and spray paint it black. It's gonna be the same for your fuel gauge. You have these tabs, you have three of them. You just pop those tabs this piece will come off. You just want to be careful because they are plastic and they will break. So this does release your gauge. Just make sure you orientate it correctly, just like that. It's not going to go the other way. It won't let you. It'll only go on one way. So like I said, you do want to be careful when you're pushing these out. I was being careful with this one, but yet it still broke off. Uh, these two will still hold it down. But like I said, just be careful when you're taking these off. Now, I don't understand why Harley keeps doing the chrome, but it is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and sand these down and paint them. And I'm going to do the same thing with the larger gauge cluster. All right, so now I'm going to remount everything to the new inner fairing. Same way you took it off, you're going to put it back on. You have your three clips for your rubber trim. Now, one thing you wanna make sure before you mount this on, you wanna make sure that all your mounting surfaces that mount your assembly to the fairing, you wanna make sure everything's flush. There's no burr sticking out or you know paint. You want all these surfaces flat. You don't want anything that's gonna kinda throw your inner fairing off when remounting it. So here I have some double-sided tape. I'm gonna use that in some areas just to make sure that all this sticks and it doesn't fall off. Now 
Now you can use a heat gun to reactivate the glue on these. Now I'll go ahead and get the speaker grills back in. Now just pay attention on what speaker grill you have. You wanna make sure you're not putting the logos upside down or anything like that. You wanna line these all up before you tighten them down. Now that I have this backing plate lined up and tightened down, I'll go ahead and install my speaker grill. Now, if I didn't say this before, you wanna make sure you have your painted parts on something soft, uh, something that's gonna protect your parts from getting scratched. Uh, you also wanna make sure that you don't have any metal shards or some type of tools underneath here that'll scratch up this fairing or any painted parts you might have. Now the torque value for these fairing speaker grill screws is nine to 13 inch pounds. So here I'm using a fat wrench. It helps with those lower torque values from 10 to 65. All right, so I have the bezels all painted up. I just sanded them down, get all that chrome off to a uh, rough finish. And then I added some primer, some gloss black spray paint, and then some clear coat. Now you don't have to spray paint the whole thing. I wouldn't advise it just because you want it to sit flush on the inner fairing uh, when you go to mount it. So you just want to spray paint the parts that you can actually see. So I'll go ahead and mount these back on to the gauges. I'll be taking these off again because I will be installing the Dakota digital gauges that I got off of Rick Rack, but I wanna show you that in a different process where it doesn't involve taking apart the whole interfering. They just click in right into place. Like I said, be careful with these tabs. They do break very easily. Now, even though this one's broken, it should still sit on there pretty firmly just because you have these three screws that are going to be holding it down. So all of these bezels have a rubber pad on the back and they sit on here just like this. I would just put these in first and then mount your gauge cluster. I'll install the gauge cluster screw. So the torque value for this larger gauge cluster screw is 10 to 20 inch pounds. So if you look at where your smaller gauges go, you have it marked for fuel and you have it marked for voltage. Get all of your screws lined up first and then tighten it down. Now the torque value for these smaller gauges is eight to 15 inch pounds. Now, if you're not using a torque wrench, just make sure you do not over tighten because they will crack. All right, so here we have the media compartment door. It has a cover on it. You just pop this off and then you pop your new one on. There's some tabs along the edges. Now you can take your media compartment off if you want to, but you can do it right here. Uh, pretty easy, just use a small screwdriver around the edges and it'll pop right off. So if you look at your media compartment door, you have some tabs along the edges. You just pry up on those and this will pop right off. So here I have the new media compartment door cover in the Eldorado Gold. I did add some 3M double-sided tape just to secure it on there a little bit better. Same thing on here, you do have some tabs along the edges and it'll just pop right on. All right, so now you just wanna line it up. Just work around the edges. Make sure it clicks into place with those tabs. Now I'll reinstall the speaker pods, radio, and support bracket assembly onto the inner fairing. Just make sure your media door is open 
and then just get everything lined up. All right, now that I have this back on, I'll start getting the screws installed. Now, when you go to install your screws, you don't wanna tighten them down all the way. You wanna make sure you have some adjustability so you can shift it around and get everything else lined up. Now, you wanna make sure when you're getting these screws in that they go in nice and straight. You don't wanna strip them out. Now, the torque value for the fairing speaker enclosure to the fairing screws is 48 to 60 inch pounds. Now the torque value for the upper support bracket to inner fairing screws is 10 to 19 inch pounds. Now I'll get the power outlet reinstalled. You just wanna make sure you line up that notch for this retention strap. That notch is lined up with that bottom notch. I'll take the rear retention cap and slide it on. And same thing, I'm using a one inch 12 point socket to tighten it down. I'll go ahead and reconnect the power cable to the power outlet. You have a horizontal connection and a vertical connection, so just make sure you're lining it up. All right, so now I'll reconnect the gauges. I'll reinstall the Christmas tree retention clip. The center connector. You wanna make sure both tabs on each side are locked down. Just give it a slight tug to make sure it's secure. Same thing, don't forget your Christmas tree retention clip. Just push that back in. Now I'll reinstall the vent. You have these slots and these slots that it lines up with, and you just slide it in. Then you have your two screws with washers. Now the torque value for this vent assembly to interfering screws is 20 to 30 inch pounds. So the last screw we have left is the lower media compartment screw. Now the torque value for this lower media compartment screw is eight to 12 inch pounds. All right, so here we have the dash panel. All we have to do is switch out the accessory switch modules on the back to the new one. You have a total of four screws and these are a T25. So you want this fatter side towards the ignition switch. So none of these screw holes have been tapped yet. So you will be tapping these screw holes with the actual screws. Now the torque value for these screws is 12 to 17 inch pounds. And before you remount your fairing, just make sure you have all your wires out of the way. So just carefully line it up so you don't scratch it up. Now from here, I'll reconnect all the connectors. Here you have your twist grip sensor. I'll plug this one in. I'll reconnect the radio. Make sure your lock is disengaged. Make sure you have it all lined up with the lock. Make sure it clicks into place. All these connectors had Christmas tree retention posts. Here I have the AM FM connector. Make sure that this retention clip is on the bottom. I'll connect the main to fairing harness. Here you have the left handlebar switch harness. It's all by its lonesome. 
So it'll go here off to the left side or to the right side as you're looking at it. It only goes in one way. Make sure you hear a click. Here you have your right handlebar switch harness with the run stop switch. These are together so you can't really mix these up. Just give it a slight tug to make sure it's secure. Now from here, I'm gonna check the brake line and the clutch line clearance, making sure nothing is pulling or tugging that I can turn all the way to the left, all the way to the right. Nothing's rubbing against the forks and nothing's rubbing against the frame. Now, before I remount the outer fairing, I'm gonna clean all these wires up, tuck everything in. I'm gonna reinstall the dash panel. Just remember that your left connector, the release tab is on the top and the right connector, the release tab is on the bottom. Then I'll reinstall the tank. You have your two screws in the front and your two screws in the rear. And the torque value on these is 15 to 20 foot pounds. I'll reconnect the vent line. I'll reconnect the fuel tank connector. So I'll reconnect the fuel line, just push up on this collar and it'll pop right in.